Okay, we'll call the 26th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Sue, <clears throat> would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Berg? Here. Serta? Here. Graf? Mm -hmm. Kittleson? Excused. Laux? Here. Manny? Here. Montemayor? Here. Perez? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Excused. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. And Warner? Here. 13 present. Forms present. Alderman Warner? Thank you, Your Honor. Move the minutes of the last Common Council meeting be, be approved and that the same stand as entered on the record. Second. We've got a motion and a second before us that the minutes of the previous Council meeting stand approved. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Alderman Warner, Lauks, and Van Akron, will you lead us in a pledge to me, please? And Eric. And Eric. Yeah, I'll, we're all going. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. associated with the new addition to our family. Right. And that can be accepted and placed on file. Okay. Public forum. Um, our first one this evening is Dimple Adams. Could I get your address, Temple, please? 1424 Virginia Avenue. Virginia? Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Again, um, I'd like to thank Mayor Schramm and um, all the alder persons and Mr. McLean for being able to come tonight. And I also want to wish Mayor Schramm and Alderman Warner and Van Akron and Laux. Um, and thank you for all the service that you've given to the city the last few years and for all the alder persons that are remaining and the new mayor elect and the new alder persons that will be joining her. I'm looking forward to getting to know you all and working with you, you know, in the coming months. The issue I came to talk about tonight is the Sheridan Park issue. We about beat it to death, folks. It is not a new issue for me. I discussed it several times with several alder persons and Mayor Schramm last August and September. And um, people like Mr. Wagaman when he was an alderman, Mr. Peterson, Mr. Perez, and Mayor Schramm sent a letter to the editor, which never got published, because I want the police station at Sheridan Park. And there are many, many reasons for this. And I am not alone with this. All of my neighbors that own their homes and live in their homes in this area that I have talked to want the police station in that area. Um, the reasons for us are very simple. One, it is an older neighborhood. It's a historical neighborhood. And we've had many, many problems in that neighborhood in the last few years. We have drugs in that neighborhood. We have gangs in that neighborhood. When one of my neighbors who lives across the street can get beat up in front of his own sidewalk and get his jaw broken by a gang of hoodlums, uh, there's something wrong. When people that are in the park find used syringes, there's something wrong. 
when there's crack houses or drug houses across the street or within a two block radius of Sheridan Park and in that neighborhood, there's something wrong. When I talk to all the persons about this and when I've talked to our new mayor elect about this and I talked to a couple of the older persons that are going to be coming in, they tell me that this is a police issue. Well, I say it is now a community issue. Your last election made it a community issue. My neighborhood has been in the center of this whole thing for months, and we're tired of it. We want something done about our neighborhood. <laughs> um, I have a 10-year-old grandson that also lives at 1424A Virginia Avenue. He's lived there all of his life except for his first two years. And we have never, ever allowed him to go play in Sheridan Park. The reason, it's not safe. It's got trash behind it on the east side. If you don't believe me, come over there and visit it. And I'm, you know, I realize that the quote, the people have spoken. Well, I've been speaking about this issue for a long time. We just don't get heard. The press doesn't write about us. It's not talked about. And frankly, after it was voted on three times, or maybe four, I've forgotten, by the council, I thought that it was, you know, going to be built fair and that I didn't need to talk about it anymore. Well, here I find myself talking about it again. And I am not happy. I am very upset as a taxpayer of Sheboygan about this. <coughs> Excuse me. Also a very nervous taxpayer tonight. Okay. Now our policeman and our police chief, Mr. Kirk, has said over and over and over again why he wants the police station there. I'm asking everybody, why can't we support this? How many more years is this police chief and our policemen gonna have to wait for a new station? If we, again, have a new study done and argue about a new site, it's already been proven that the new study was not correct. It did not allow for the million dollars that it's going to cost to build the police station there um, with the um, issues of salt shed and the $300,000 escrow You're, and blah, yeah. blah, blah. Yeah. Somebody else will take that up. But anyway, thank you. Thank you. Um, next on the list is Bob Latree, please. Bob, could I have your home address? 717 Dillingham Avenue. Dilling, Dillingham? And you will have five minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. I uh, spent a few minutes and I'd like to pay tribute to Mayor Schramm for the great leadership he's displayed during his eight year tenure as Mayor of Sheboygan. Mayor Schramm stepped in in a tough, tough time. We've had to deal with the storm sewers that other administrations have not dealt with, you name it, but you got it done. Got it done very well. Mayor Schramm was the moving force in rebuilding the downtown and bringing new businesses to the almost dead downtown. He was instrumental in bringing the beautiful Blue Harbor to Sheboygan, getting rid of the eyesore, the coal, the salt on this beautiful peninsula, the beautiful lake of Sheboygan. And finally, now we have this just fantastic, fantastic hotel, world class. You look at uh, the in infrastructure in downtown Sheboygan, never been so so beautiful. The streets, I don't care if you come in from the north, the south, the west, I mean you're coming into a world class city and I think Jim played a big, big part with that along with a good majority of you here and I applaud you also. 
But, you know, when you look at, when you look at everything that's gone on, one of the biggest priorities of Mayor Schramm was public safety. And I guess uh, when I, I go back, uh, when I first moved here in 1963, and all the mayors I've known and got involved with politics and uh, seen what happened, he, uh, I guess you were, the, you were the first one that finally took the bull by the horns and says, we're going to build a police station. I don't care what the people think whether right, wrong, indifferent, you took a stand, Mayor, and I applaud you for that. It's very, very easy to sit in the peanut gallery back here or on the streets and make all these foolish comments, not knowing anything of what's going on, and uh, just talk foolishly. It takes a leader, a man, to take a stand like you did. And again, just in conclusion, Mayor, I want to say that I'm proud that I've been a supporter of yours, a friend of yours. I know that you love Sheboygan more than anybody else. And yes, Mayor, Sheboygan is better off today than it was when you took over eight years ago. And Mayor, I applaud you. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I hope you and your family, I know you'll succeed in any endeavor you, you take because you're a hard worker. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, next on our list is David Kirk. <clears throat> David, you will have five minutes. Okay. First off this evening, I, I'd like to say thank you for allowing me just uh, a few minutes to say uh, some of my concerns that many, many times I've said in private, but I think now it's, it's come time that I finally do say them out loud. Uh, Mayor, tonight I'd like to show my debt of gratitude, express to you my gratitude for the many years of public service that you have given to this city. Your unselfish dedication, commitment to our city is fantastic. You, you've served as uh, 10 years as an alderman, eight years as a mayor. Last five years I've served with you very closely as a, a police chief. And as a, a chief of police, I'm here today to say thank you. You've helped me out many, many ways that you don't even know of. You've helped our employees out and I wish to say thank you from our employees for the commitment, the dedication, the understanding and the support for public safety. You have taken a stand. Public safety was your number one priority, and we thank you for that. Personally, as the Chief of Police, I wish to say thank you also. You provided uh, me many times when I took over as Chief. I, I've come to you with many questions. I've asked those questions again and again because many times they didn't understand. I've come to understand some, some great things now because of you. You provided insight, encouragement, consideration. You, you've oftentimes spoke of, of things that we wanted to do as a police department and you encourage us to seek those out. You've taken a stand for a new police department and the employees and I, I thank you for that. Also your performance and your work ethic has encouraged me to be a better performer myself. I dedicated myself because of you uh, to better focus on a, a vision of a quality service Oftentimes you stood on what is best for Sheboygan, and I now take that to be one of my ideals in life. Jim, I've, I've never met a man with a more positive can-do attitude. Many times we sat down at meetings, and you rephrased it time and time again, Chief, we can do this. We can do it. What is best for Sheboygan? Your unbounded enthusiasm and optimism has led others to be better. It was contagious. I worked with you closely for five years. It was contagious. You made me to be a better person. You set the standard of excellence in city employment, and I thank you for that. Lastly, Mayor, you are, you will be, you always will be a success. Unfortunately, you lost an election. However, I know why you're going to be a success, because you cannot and you will not lose what's right here. You are 
for Sheboygan, you value Sheboygan, and I value you for that. I thank you for your insight, your many, many days and hours of encouragement to us to be better. We were better because of you, and I think Sheboygan is better because of you. Thank you, Jim, and you will be missed. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next on the list is Ron Beenan. Can I get your home address, please? 525 South 28th. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. You're welcome. I, too, have come tonight to say thank you to Mayor Jim. Uh, I first met Jim when he was an alderman, and uh, there was some paving projects going on in my neighborhood. And uh, even at that time, it was apparent that he was dedicated to the, to the success and to the future of this city. Eight years ago, we elected Jim Mayor, and with cautious optimism, looked to the future. Promises were made, but as we all know, the ideals of promises and the reality of delivering on those promises are often separated by walls of opposing forces. Yet for the most part, Jim was successful. <coughs> and his vision of Sheboygan at that time when he took office is in fact reality today. And his ideas have proven to be beneficial to everyone in this community. The repairs for the in, in, to the infrastructure, the dressing up of the gateways to the city, the sewer project, and of course, the uh, South Pier Drist District are all demonstrate, demonstration of Jim's keen vision for what is needed for the future for this community. Today, with all the commercial, industrial, and civic developments, a mayor needs to remain focused on the dynamics of future and future growth and to understand what is needed to foster that growth. Jim stayed focused and Jim helped foster that growth. Jim has also performed well balancing the industrial and commercial community, maintaining a solid industrial base while encouraging diversification by providing opportunities for advancements and, and development in the service sector. Jim has brought true leadership with honesty, integrity, and a true concern for all to the office of mayor in the city of Sheboygan. So as we move forward, changes will be made, but the destination will always be the same. A better, a more progressive, a more prosperous, a more secure, a more diversified Sheboygan. Jim recognized the constant progression required to survive as a city in this evolving society. He has brought us a future well prepared to take on the further move forward. It is up to those of us who follow to learn from his example. So Jim, for your selfless sacrifice, for your dedication to this community, for your honesty, for your integrity, for your commitment, and for all your successes, and there are many, I thank you. You have earned and deserve the respect of everyone in this community. Thank you. Thank you. And the last on the list is Jamie Schramm. <clears throat> Jamie, can you give me your home address, please? 1227 North 29th Street, that's Sheboygan. 1227 North <clears throat> 29th Street. 29th. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Good evening. I would like to thank all of you for the opportunity to speak. I would like to thank all the outgoing elected officials gathered here tonight. Your commitment, your service, and yes, at times even your sacrifice are truly an asset to our community. 18 years ago this week, on April 21st, 1987, four new aldermen were sworn into office. John Justinger, the late Jim Todd, Don Van Akron, and Jim Schramm. Also sworn in that night was city attorney-elect Steve McLean. I recall sitting in the council chambers that night, 
a warm April evening, and for those of you who remember, the councils were not air conditioned back then. There were two large fans at the front. The fans were large and they were loud. You either left them on and couldn't hear what was going on, or you shut them off and suffered with the heat. That night, April 21st, 1987, was also the night the historic 13-game winning streak came to an end for the Milwaukee Brewers and their manager, Tom Treblehorn. We were listening to the game back here. <laughs> <laughs> Much has changed since 1987. Mayor Schramm, then Alderman Elect Schramm, wasn't a grandfather yet. I was 15 then, and I'm sure Police Chief Kirk was breathing easier as I hadn't gotten a driver's license yet. A gallon of milk cost $1.98, a loaf of bread cost $1.28, a new car averaged $7,012. Something we all can appreciate these days, a gallon of gas cost just $1.07. President Ronald Reagan was finishing his second term. U2's The Joshua Tree was all the rage in popular music. Oliver North was becoming a celebrity, and later that year in October, the stock market took its biggest one-day decline in history. Locally, then Mayor Sh Schneider was in the middle of his first term. A Street was being reopened. There was no Walmart. Taylor Drive hadn't been completed. City Center, how many of you remember that? And not Harbor Center was the main topic in city politics. The marina hadn't been built. There was no Washington Square, no Blue Harbor, and the boardwalk and riverfront development were in their infancy. Sheboygan was on the move, and there were several key leaders making things happen. Alderman Tram would go on to serve the 3rd District for 10 years. I can still recall the discussion with then Mayor Sh Schneider about becoming an alderman. Advice from retiring alderman Len Becker, who still waves when you drive by his house. That first campaign with the red and white signs and our literature was designed with pre-Windows 3.1 days. Yes, version 3.1 before that. But Alderman Tram believed in the 3rd District, believed in the city of Sheboygan, and believed in the values his parents raised with him and that he was passing along to his children. Then came 1997, the first mayoral race. We were happy, proud, and full of energy. I recall in late December 1996 at Dave's Who's In, introducing then mayoral candidate Jim Schramm to someone named Mike Warner, whoever would have thought. You repeated your success in 2001, winning by the largest margin in city history. Eight years of hard work, success, and standing up for what you believed in. While 2005 did not prove to be as successful as those previous years, I've said it was the most rewarding. We all know about the jobs you've created, the development which has occurred, how wonderful North A Street has become, a riverfront, the hard work put into the budgets and the accolades the city has received. But to many of you, us who have followed you since that first campaign in 1987, this last year was your finest. Through triumph and tragedy, success and setback, you stood for all the things you believed in. And win or lose, you reminded us they're worth fighting for. And the things we believe in will be there tomorrow, a month from now, in a year from now. So while we say thank you for making Sheboygan a better place, we say thank you for being you. Now there are two men, if they could be here tonight, they might have a thing or two to say. But I'm certain they're looking down on us tonight. The first would be your father. And I'm certain Harlan is sitting back, folding his hands across his chest, muttering, you've done well, Mosty, you've done well. The other person, his counterpart and your father-in-law, is probably grinning one of those smirks and chuckling only as Robert could but they knew something long before any of us did. That you travel a long and winding road from the intersection of Highway W and Shram Road up in Marinette County. And as I think we all know, the question is not if, but when you'll pick an opportunity to serve again, whether it be elected office, on a commission or board, or championing a favorite cause. But whatever road you choose to follow, or maybe in your case, whatever road you choose to pave, many of us will be there with you. Until that time, there's a portrait many of us have in our minds. It is a portrait of hard work, of a job well done, and a portrait of character. It is one we'd like to share with you tonight, is our way of saying it has been an honor, we're proud, and simply to say thanks. Thanks, Jeremy. <laughs>
expect that to make. Okay, we're done with consent agenda, or con yeah, consent agenda, public forum consent agenda. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. Move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file. All RCs be accepted and adopted. And all resolutions, substitute resolutions, and ordinances be passed. Okay, we have a motion before us and second. All ROs be accepted and filed. RCs be accepted and adopted. Resolutions and ordinances be put upon their passage. At 26 1 through 26 34. 26 33 needs to be filed on a consent agenda separately. Alderman Bowman. Your Honor, I'd move that the uh, uh, RC and, yeah, basically the RC be accepted and filed. Is there any discussion? All, excuse me, Alderman Warner? Uh, not on that, Your Honor, there's three documents. Okay. Alderman Vanderbilt, was it on that one? No, sir. Okay, I'll get back to you two then. No other fur further discussion, all in favor? Motion? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Okay, 26 1 through 26 34 again. Alderman Vanderbilt, you're first. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I actually might have took something away from Alderman Warner, but we'll find that out in a little bit. <laughs> um, I just wanted to pull 26 7 and I wanted to speak about that. Okay. It is a communication from S Sergeant James Nalan of the Caddo Parish Sheriff's Department. It's in Louis Louisiana, praising the Sheboygan Police Department for their help to his family during their stay here. And it's a well-written letter uh, describing what had happened to them while they were here in Sheboygan visiting. But I just wanted to read one paragraph that they had said. Police work as executed by your department renews my faith in the badge and reminds me of how it can work when dedicated young officers take pride in their job and the public they serve. Um, this person, James Nolan, says, I almost sacrificed my life serving the public. I was sworn to protect, and young people like these remind me that the oath is not a forgotten thing. So I just wanted to state that uh, we have a fine police department, and I wanted to reiterate that. Thank you, Senator. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the first document I wanted to speak on was document 26-3. Your Honor, that document, uh, Council and Citizens, uh, is the document that deals with the lawsuit that was brought against the city of Sheboygan by the businesses owned in part by Renee Shusha and Susan Hunley. The businesses are in the old Rice Mansion, which is above the North Side Beach, and the former Ballrath home on the northeast corner of 7th and Michigan. But I just felt that it's with something like this and everything that this council and the city went through when this was brought forth and, and a lot of other issues, that this should be something the public is made aware of. So I'm just going to read a brief part of what's in this finding. And that goes, uh, it's on page two actually. It says, because the city of Sheboygan neither violated the public purpose doctrine nor transgressed equal protection principles in its use of room tax dollars, the court is constrained to dismiss these claims. Further, the court holds that the city's expenditure of funds collected via its room tax ordinance was consistent with the legislative requirements prescribed by state statutes. Consequently, the court is impelled to dismiss this claim also. Hence, the court shall order the claims of the plaintiffs be dismissed with prejudice, and judgment shall summa summa summarily be entered on behalf of the defendants. Your Honor, I believe it is important that the people of the city of Sheboygan know that what the city stated all along is true. That, be, that being that the room tax funds are being used properly and in accordance with state law. Thank you. The other document, Your Honor, that I wanted to speak on was 26-7 and Alderman Vanderwilly. That was exactly what I was going to say. Great police department, great job, public service, people that are from outside our community goes a long ways. The other document, Your Honor, is document 26-8. That document came from the City Plan Commission, and it reads, to your commission to whom was referred RO number 5520405 relative to a communication from Robert E. Garten, Jr., stating that his family is interested in donating their property known as Burr Oak, approximately 35 acres of exceptional, undeveloped natural land to the city of Sheboygan. And the plan commission on that 
uh, discussed the matter and is in favor completely of accepting this, this gift from the Garten family. And I'd just like to publicly thank the Garten family for their donation to this city. Uh, the Gartens are one of Sheboygan's great families, a great benefactor to the city, and uh, we truly appreciate their gener generosity to the city of Sheboygan, and it's a great addition for our Maywood properties. Thank you, Mike. That's it. Thank you. All the No? That was the one I wanted to speak Okay. <laughs> Anyone else wishing to speak on a consent agenda? Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? <coughs> Berg. Aye. Soda. Aye. Colonel. Aye. Lokes. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. And Bauman. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 2635 through 42 to be referred. Resolutions introduced, 2643 by Alderman Berg, consenting to the transfer of Northgate Mall to Inland Real, Real Estate Corporation or its affiliations. Alderman Berg. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask for suspension of rules, please. We have a motion before us and a second on suspension. Is there any objections? Any objections? Proceed. Then I move that uh, document 2640 three be put upon its passage. We have a motion before us in a second at document 2643 be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll please? Soda. Aye. Graf. Aye. Lokes. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. And Berg. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. Thanks for coming up, Tom. 2644 by Alma Grofberg authorizing the appropriations, appropriate city officials to provide notice to Health EOS and Multiplan Inc. of termination of the CHN payer agreement. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. That document, along with document 2645, which is a resolution authorizing entering into agreement for the employee assistance program. I would move that the two resolutions be put upon their passage. Second. We have a motion and a second before us that resolution 26, 44, and 45 be put upon their passage. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, would you call the roll? Graf. Aye. Lokes. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. And Serta. 13 ayes. Motion carry. 2646 by Alderman Bauman, Berg, Sigali, Reinflesch, and Kettleson authorizing the appropriate city officials to install a street light at the curve of 1641 Butternut Island Street. Alderman Bauman. I thank you, Your Honor. I'd move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and second before us. The resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. New street, none. There's one there? Actually, no. Uh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. This is, it's a very winding road in the uh, uh, Lost Creek Settlement okay. subdivision. And this particular area is very poorly lit. And the neighbors got together and asked if we could put in a street light. And of course, the uh, staff looked at it and thought it should be approved, and the Public Works Committee did so. Thank you. OK, is there another discussion? Sure. Okay. Lokes. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Rinfleisch. Sagali. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Serta. Aye. And Graf. Aye. Thir 13 ayes. Motion carried. 2647 to be referred. 26, and that will go to Public Works of New Common Council. 2648 will be referred to the Building Use Committee of the New Common Council. Reporters, reports of committees, 2649 by the Committee of the Whole recommending forwarded documents submitted the review of the proposed City of Sheboygan Police Facility by the consultants for a group of concerned citizens to the Common Council. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would make a motion to file. We have a motion and a second before us to file under discussion. Okay, 
Steve. Um, I guess I, I've looked at the issue, and at the last meeting of the council year, I don't think you can defer something to the next meeting because this, the council ends. If you'd want to send it to the new council, you could refer it to the new council, but uh, I don't think you can defer action to the next meeting because there is no next meeting. The uh, council will adjourn, sign or die tonight. Thank you, Don, we're so moved. Okay. Excuse me, Alderman Lantmeyer, your motion would be to? Um, send it to refer. the new council. Just refer it to the new council. council. Okay. And who seconded to that, please? Graf. Alderman Graf. Yes, Alderman Perez. I have a, a question to Attorney McLean. I keep hearing you say, I think. Do we, do we have case law that says that we cannot refer to the new council, defer to the new council? Case the law? deferring and the referring, there's not much difference. Uh, and I keep hearing you say, I think, I don't think we can do that. You haven't said you can't. Well, that's because I don't, there is no case law, Alderman Perez. This is a local ordinance. Uh, there is an analogy in Robert's Rules of Order dealing with uh, postponement to a certain time. And that's really what you're doing, postponing to the next regular meeting. But that, the, the code in the municipal code, the section in the municipal code would supersede that rule because those are the rules that we've adopted and right. codified in our code. And our right. code says we can. Well. You can defer it to the next meeting of the council, but there is no next meeting of the council. The council dies when you adjourn, sign a die. It's a new council that starts up. We it's not the same. Uh, it's not the same council. So that's, you know, that's my opinion, uh, Alderman Perez. I'm not the chair. I'm not parliamentarian, but that's my legal advice to the council. And I will accept that. Thank uh, you. I challenge the call of the chair. Okay. I guess my, my question then was the motion to refer after the motion to file, which would take precedence. Is that more than one before the other? We won't file the motion to refer by. Probably not the board on that first. We'll have to go to refer or not to refer. Committing to a uh, standing committee takes precedence over filing. Okay, so we have to vote before referring it to the new council or again. Correct. Right. That has okay. precedence over filing. That's what your motion was, right? Correct. Referring to the new council. Yes, yes. Alderman Perez. If you, if you want to refer this to the new council, <coughs> that sends it on to the new council. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Alderman Perez. Uh, Attorney McLean, a, a challenge to the call of the chair decision requires a vote, does it not? What's that? A, a challenge to the call of the chair requires a vote. Two thirds majority, two thirds vote. Um, could be, I'm not sure. Uh, not sure what the procedure is. And that takes precedence too. What's that? And that would be, have to be voted on first. About the. Um, percentage of votes to challenge the uh, chair's decision. I don't know if it's half, two thirds, or what it is, but I don't know what section it is, but it's in the general administration of the council, if you're looking in there, instead of the Roberts rules. Right, as far as uh, a challenge to the? Challenge to the chair, yeah. I do believe it's two thirds vote, but I don't recall exactly. In the, uh, Roberts rules. the code book. And Roberts rules. An offhand where it might be all in for it's the front section where we talk about the manager of the council. It's under administration.
Thank you, Eric. Well, uh, Attorney McLean is checking out uh, the ruling of the law. Question for Sue. If we refer this to the council, can this be on the agenda for tomorrow evening? Well, the agenda is already out, Alderman Manny, right. so it would be a matter of whether or not we can do it within 24 hours to amend the, we would have to amend the agenda. Is that possible? Yes. Thank you. Thoughts? Alderman Orner. Another question for Sue. I guess uh, when you say two-thirds of the council, we had an incident in the past where you had to have two-thirds of the council, and there's not two-thirds. Two-thirds of the council would be <coughs> 12 votes. Two-thirds of the council. It's not members present. It would be a question of whether it's based on all the aldermen in the body or the aldermen present. And I would defer that to Steve whether or not. Uh, I found a section that deals with uh, appeal of rulings of the chair um, doesn't speak of requiring any extraordinary vote. Yeah. It says uh, this under section 2-121 duties of presiding officer sub 12 says preserve order and decorum may speak to points of order and preference to others rising from a seat for that purpose shall decide questions of order subject to an, to an appeal by any member on which appeal no member shall speak more than once unless by leave of the council. On appeal being taken, the question shall be, shall the decision of the chair stand as the judgment in council, which question and the action thereon shall be entered on the journal. So that's. So there's no uh, two thirds. I'm assuming, uh, I'm not aware of anything that would require a two thirds vote. I think it'd just be a majority vote. If, uh, Eric, if you think it's two thirds, I can look further in Robert's rules of order. I would think it would be a majority vote. Majority majority yep. Majority present, yeah. Okay, so that takes precedence. Alderman Perez's motion takes precedence over the, uh, the, filing. The appeal of the, the ruling uh, would need to be acted on. Okay, well, let's vote first. on it then. So, does everybody, are we all clear on what we're voting on first? Voting on. Yes. Alderman Perez, correct me if I'm wrong, but you are challenging uh, the opinion of the chair. Right. Is that correct? And you want to wish a vote? The majority will? The decision, the question is, shall the decision of the chair stand as a judgment in council? The decision of the chair was not to recognize the three-person three three, three person deferral. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. So an I vote would be on a challenge? To sustain the, the decision. Mayor's. Is that understood by everybody? Everybody understand? And I vote would be to hold the mayor's decision. Is that what you understand, Alderman Perez? Yes, and finally, just about Madam Clerk, just a, a vote no means that we will not uh, sustain the decision of the chair. Right. That's right. Does Which everybody, I see puzzled <laughs> looks out here. A no vote means that you will not sustain what the chair has just decided. A yes vote means you, you. agree. A no vote means you do not agree. Is, is that clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, Alderman Ryan Fleisch, you had your. Yeah, I just want to speak on actually the three man hole itself, not necessarily the issue at hand of Sheridan Park. Um, I think the three man hole really is in the, the book when, I, when I've looked at that carefully, and there's a lot of. Is, Robert's rules is much easier to read than our, our city code book in terms of some of these rules here. But my impression is, is that it's for a chance to uh, gain more information. It's not a stall tech necessarily. Uh, because you can't stall indefinitely. It has to be acted on in the, in the next meeting. You can't stall again after that point in time. So I don't think it's really meant as a uh, delay or indefinitely delay. It's really meant as uh, let's take a pause, let's get some more information, um, and, and let's vote clearly and conscientiously on the specific issue at hand. Um, now let's get into politics a little bit of that a little bit. This is my last meeting here, and uh, there will be some, another, actually, Marge will be sitting here, and someone else will be sitting there tomorrow. <laughs> um, uh, as well, um, and a one-day uh, vote certainly is not going to give, I think, the person, uh, Mr. Davis, who's, who will uh, be taking over for me uh, in my district, enough time to really gain all the information. I would hope that if we do defer, we don't defer to uh, the next council, but I don't think that's possible. 
Um, but it is politics. There are issues out there that uh, people do feel very strong on. I think they should be heard on that one. So I will vote no, no correct me, <laughs> to maintain it, so to maintain a three-person hole. Thank you. Alderman Werner. Thank you, Your Honor. It's just we're voting on either maintaining or not maintaining the hold. So I vote to maintain. Right. My decision. So no votes not to maintain my decision. So anyone who agrees with your position votes aye. And who doesn't, and who doesn't votes doesn't no. Votes nay. Okay. You okay? All set. <laughs> okay. Would you call the roll? Uh, sure. <clears throat> um, Manny. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I go right down the list. It should have really been in the discussion, right. Alderman Mandy. I vote to uphold the mayor's decision. That's an I vote. Montemayor. No. Perez. No. Rinfleisch. No. Sagali. Aye. Uh, Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. And Laos. Aye. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have ten eyes and three no's. Thank you. Thank you, Council. All right, now we move forward. Now we have a motion before us to. Re the last one before that is Alderman Montemayor refer to the next council. Council, okay. I vote would be to for referral, no vote would be to drop it. Okay. Is everybody clear? Is everybody I vote clear? is to refer it on. No vote is to not. No vote is to not. It's to keep it right here. Alderman Wright. Uh, thank you. Um, my last meeting, I have to speak. <laughs> I finally can speak again after a couple of weeks of not being able to. So I'm going to enjoy this opportunity. Um, I really want to vote on this issue. Uh, this is a very important issue to the city. Uh, we need to get this police station built immediately for the department heads. But it's also a divisive issue in the city, as we know, as well. And I do think, once again, that... Uh, uh, the public that did have a vote in the election, I think spoke fairly clearly, and uh, I think there's some people that want to get involved in the debate that have not been in the debate in terms of the elected officials. So I do, will, I will give them the opportunity, or I will attempt to give them the opportunity to cast their vote in my stead, but uh, we do need a police station quickly. Thank you. Alderman Warner. Your Honor, I want to make it clear that anything that this council does, and does not preclude the future council from making any other choice. Right. The matter. Okay, does everybody understand what we're voting on? Clarify it. An I vote means that we are taking this document and referring it to the new Common Council. A nay vote means it stays here for action on the motion previous, which was to file. File it. Okay. Those are the votes. Okay. We all set? Set. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sagali. No. Van Akron. No. Vanderweel. No. Warner. Bauman, no. Berg, no. Serta, no. Graf, Aye. Laux, no. Manny. Five eyes, eight noes. Motion failed. All right, now we go to Alderman Warner's motion. Alderman Warner. I think uh, it's just something I wanted to say. Um, you know, there has been a great deal of discussion, not only on this document, but on all the documents that we've been dealing, dealing with for a new police station. In fact, there's been a great deal of discussion over four years. Some of the members in this room attended some of those building use <coughs> meetings, and some of them attended very few. I guess uh, some of the discussion that's been out there has been constructive, and some has not been. But that's the nature of anything that is based on opinion and controversy. That's what we're elected to do, is to wade through the opinion and controversy and make decisions based on facts that are in the best interest of the city of Sheboygan. First, I disagree with the entire premise of this report, as do many others. People talk of a 3,000 person petition, there were 47,000 people that did not sign it. It's my belief that all, although well-intentioned at the onset, the Muth report has resulted in a flawed document that uses supposition and inaccurate information as a basis. 
And that is problematic for me. The Muth report was supposed to be an unbiased, independent report. And it's clear to anyone who attended those meetings that that is not the case. The report was done in a couple of months with maybe 24 to 30 hours worth of interviews and virtually no real research or fact-finding. In contrast, the Kimmy Steubenrock study took over a year to complete and was a comprehensive and detailed look at the needs and requirements of our police department and a new police station as well as a city hall. The Muth report simply does not meet the muster of independence. And after comments made by its main supporter, I believe it had a predetermined outcome. That's what I believe. And, and I just don't understand how in all common sense and responsibility we can accept something like this is factual and legitimate. I cannot do it. That's why I made the motion to file. Thank you. Would you repeat? Okay, Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. Just, uh, just a couple of points. I was concerned about this document being filed uh, primarily because we've, a lot of us have talked about creating a smooth transition and this would have been an excellent example mm -hmm. of keeping that word of providing a smooth transition and allowing the new members of the new council to take a look at this independent study uh, and perhaps not agree with the aldermen that are here today, they won't be here tomorrow. Uh, and it would have just created an excellent opportunity for those aldermen to be able to review the report. Now I agree with Alderman Warner. The document can be brought back and maybe it will be, but it would have provided the excellent opportunity for that smooth transition that we all talked about and uh, maybe it hasn't occurred. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. I agree with Alderman Perez distinctly and believe this should go on referral to the new council, but then also to building use and also city plan. Uh, that gives people who are new on the council the chance to be in small group to sift through and to have a good chance to study it, uh, and then they have much more breadth and, and knowledge as they come back to Common Council. Alderman Rayfish? I think he actually, did you just move to go to building use and city plan, Alderman Manny? Once it goes to council. Once it goes to the new council, not currently? Right. Okay. Um, two years ago, I sat in the, uh, in the back of the Monday, the last session before uh, being sworn in, on Tuesday uh, into the city council. I remember two years ago, the big debate was the Blue Harbor contract, this big 99-page document that uh, the council was going to sit here all night if it took to get it done. Uh, and there was a lot of debate that night uh, made, a lot of uh, heated arguments, a lot of red foreheads and sway brows, because it was a very big, important issue. The problem was that there was a lot of questions that came up from the floor that I think a lot of Alderman felt couldn't be answered. If I ask the question, do I run the risk of, of not getting the development? Um, and as what happened is we had a lot of questions and how many, how many other times do we have to vote on that before we could finally get the agreement where we had, including legal fees, changes in titles and ownership and how we uh, title the condos versus, were, were they part of residential or are they uh, tourists or, or what? I mean, a lot of other things came up with that and it shows that uh, best decisions aren't made under pressure in one night. It also shows that asking questions doesn't mean you're against the project. I would have loved the opportunity to vote on it first and foremost uh, and had it come to me. I would have loved the opportunity to have the 99 page document in my hand, which actually I did get, but to be able to vote on that uh, as an incoming council member. And I did not have the opportunity initially because we had to get it done that, that night. That's how I feel we're doing right now again. I'm feeling that we're trying to get this decision made immediately because we're afraid of the continuity of this, of this common council. People, I think that, that City of Sheboygan is much stronger than the 15 of us, 16 of us that are here in this room. I think the decisions that uh, the city needs to make are important ones, and I have faith that whoever's coming in after us will make the right decisions as well. Um, I think it's important that we ask the questions, we get the decent answers, we get the police station built, but we do it in a way that's open, that's fair, that's that's um, based on a decision that's conscientious, that everyone can be proud of, even if we disagree with what happens, we can be proud of the process that's being made. And once again, I'm feeling it's, this item is being railroaded. I'd much rather have the discussion open. We've already paid money. We're already on the process. There's already design work on Sheridan Park. You know, I don't think if we agree to go keep with Sheridan Park, we're gonna delay anything. I don't think that if we agree to build a North 23rd that we spent too much money on, on, on Sheridan Park. What's a week? What's a day? What's, what's the opportunity to give the new council their voices to be heard? They're sitting here. They can't be heard right now. I think that's, that's a travesty. Um, by 
referring it or uh, not by filing it. I think we're doing a service to all the people and all decisions of the, uh, uh, however they agree on the issue, the opportunity to be heard, ask questions, get the responses made. And uh, I will vote to file, not to file, not because I, I disagree with the arguments being made or agree with the arguments being made in the, in the report. I want to do it because it's important that we keep the discussion going. Thank you. Alderman Burke. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> First of all, the Muth or the Moyer report was supposed to be for shared services. That if we build at 23rd Street site, the Sheriff's Department's going to be building next door and we're going to be good neighbors to each other. None of us here tonight will ever see a Sheriff's Department built on the 23rd Street site where that highway department is. First of all, they would have to build a new highway department, demolish what they got on 23rd Street, and then build a, probably a $16 million Sheriff's Department. They're looking at between 25 and $30 million. Right now, the county's got enough problems trying to take care of the Rocky Knoll and Sunny Ridge problems without putting out $30 million. But no way in the world is the Sheriff's Department ever gonna build on the 23rd Street site next to where they want us to build. And I think it's time that the city aldermen make the decision where the Sheboygan Police Department is gonna be built, not the Sheboygan County Police Department. The county, the council members are the ones that make the decision. Let's not be influenced by a couple of people at the county. Thank you, Your Honor. I've only served on this council a year, and I think we need to talk about the word teamwork that's constantly being thrown out. Um, it is my understanding that majority rules, and I'm telling you, please hold me accountable, because if by chance in the future this council votes a way that I don't see fit and that I don't believe in, I am not going to go kicking and screaming. I will vote my conscience, and I take exception to us beating this dead horse, individuals using words such as this issue being railroad. I take exception to not only myself, but the other older persons who put in their time, spent hours with the department heads, reviewed this issue over and over and over again, and the citizens like Mrs. Dimple Adams, who believe that it should be built there. We are not doing a disservice to all the citizens of Sheboygan. Just remember this body, we each represent our own vote, and please, let's not put each other down for that. Thank you. Thank you. Will you explain what the vote's going to be again? Uh, the vote that's on the floor right so now is file. to file this RC. So an I vote will be to file it. A nay vote will be to not file it. Take your roll, please. Okay. Uh, Perez. Yeah. Rinfleisch. Yeah. Sigali. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta, Graf, no. Laux, Aye. Manny, no. Montemayor. No. Eight ayes, five noes. Motion carried. Thank you. We move on. 2650 through 2653 to be referred. And on 2651, Instead of Special Committee on Risk Management, that's Public Protection and Safety. I don't know if it's made on all of them. Yeah. Okay. Matters laid over. 2531 by City Plan Commission recommending amending the zoning for property located at 3144 Wilgus Road from a Class UR urban residential to a Class SO suburb office classification. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. This is the property located next to Associated Bank, uh, just off of Taylor Drive on Wilgus Road. And I believe it's going to become an office for a chiropractic Correct. office. And uh, to be good use of the building, it, the property will probably be a little better taken care of than what it had been with some of the lawn mowing issues that were there and stuff. So we're looking forward to having that additional business in the city. Alderman Werner, could you make a motion as uh, such? I would move the approval of the ordinance and that the report of officer be placed on file. Thank you. We have a motion a second before us that the RO be placed on file and, and the uh, general ordinance be put upon this passage. Under discussion.
Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Rinfleisch? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Laux? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Perez? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 2532 on our own by City Plan Commission recommending vacating the unpaved alley near the southwest corner of the intersection of North 15th Street and Geely Avenue. Alderman Warner. I thank Your Honor. I move that the uh, report of officer be accepted and placed on file and that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, this is a segment of the alley that's actually right in the middle of the block, surrounded by all other buildings. There's no access to it. It's not only unpaved, it's too small to be used and it's just being put back on the property tax rolls. Okay. Just another discussion? Actually that one was supposed to lie over, wasn't it? Yes it was. I got it crossed off but you had to lie over on there also. Right, that has to lie over 2532. Excuse me. But that's not this one. That's not this one. This is we're working on 33. Oh, that's right. We just did yep. it. Okay. okay. No, you're working on 32 now. Which one are you working on, 32. Alderman? 32. 32. That, that one lies, lies over. over. It has to lie over, Alderman Werner. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm glad you come. Okay. It's a big. It's my a motion. Yeah. Thank you. That one will lie over until May 2nd. Because the hearing is scheduled for May 2nd. Good eye. Huh? I guess. Yeah. 2533 by Redevelopment Authority recommending approving terms and conditions for the sale of property to Wittenben Auto Service. Who's got that one? Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution number 240-405 be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion to second before us that resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Here you know, will you call the roll, please? Sigali. Was that a yes? Um, we're on 25-33. We're on right. okay. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Aye. Graf? Aye. Laux? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. And Rinfleisch? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 1134 is an old document that has never been filed. I need a motion to file that, please. So moved. Second. 1174. Yep. Right. Do I have a second? Under discussion. We don't need one. Mm -hmm. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 2158 will be referred. 2515 resolution by Alderman Serta and Manny authorizing entering a contract for the purchase of AS400 backup software. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution number 2290405 be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. 2548, a resolution by Alderman Serta authorizing a transfer of appropriation of 2005 budget for one additional police officer. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that resolution number 230405 be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Laux? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? No. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. And Sigali? 12 ayes, 1 no. Motion carried. Good job, Chief. Twenty twelve twenty six. another old document that was never filed. I need a motion to file that, please. Second. Still got Manny? We said 2549. Oh, excuse me, I skipped 2549, you're right. <laughs> Let's go back one. 2549, a resolution by Alderman Serta Manny authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2005 budget. Alderman Serta. I move that resolution number 2310405 be put upon its passage. We have a motion to second before us under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll? 
Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Lauchs? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Sigali? Aye. And Van Akron? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried now 1226. A motion and a second to file. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 2562, general ordinance by Alderman Warner, Vanderweel, Reinflesch, and Serta relating to residential daytime parking privileges so as to remove the westernmost 60 feet of the south side of Ontario Avenue in the 500 block from the residential daytime parking privileges. Alderman Warner. I thank your honor. Move the general ordinance be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, uh, Jacob, Jacobson Ross purchased this property and the use change in the street for parking and things have changed along with that. So they're just trying to get the restricted parking removed. There's another discussion. Would you call the roll? Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Laux? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Rinfleisch? Sagali, Van Akron, no. and Vanderweel. Aye. 12 ayes, 1 no. Motion carried. 2572 by Alderman Warner, Vanderweel, Serta, and Renflesh declaring graffiti to be a nuisance and requiring its removal. Bonnie. Alderman who? Serta. Serta, okay. <laughs> That's her. <laughs> I move that the general ordinance number 7604.05 be put upon its passage. We have a motion before us and a second under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. This ordinance was prompted out of concerned citizens from the Franklin Park Neighborhood Watch Group. They have been working diligently in their neighborhood, cleaning up the place, dealing with drugs and crime in their neighborhood. Um, and their policy has always been to give the individual or homeowner the benefit of the doubt. And in this case, that's what they did. They tried working with the homeowner um, to get the graffiti off um, the building and the homeowner ref failed to do so. They had gone to building inspection and if you, if you go to building inspection you're going to find out they try working with you and um, there's nothing on the books that would make an individual take this off their property and this would alleviate that and still as Matt Liff Livingston stated that they're willing to work with the homeowner if it's an issue of money or they can give a, get, a, get them some supplies. Thank you. Alderman Warner. I thank you, Your Honor. This actually came before the Public Protection and Safety Committee some time back, and all the person Serta was instrumental in getting it up onto the into the limelight and working along with building inspection. I believe Marge was involved in that, and uh, it was something that in public protection and safety uh, we had a lot of discussion, but it just didn't get brought to the council to get passed all this year. So they did a great job putting it together and working with building inspection. It's very important. Thank you. Alderman, right question. Just to clarify, it puts teeth so that we can get properties cleaned up. It does not take the blame for graffiti and put it on the homeowner. If you are one that is marring uh, properties or spray painting or etching in any way uh, and you're caught, you will be punished. So it's not, we're not going easy on the actual people doing it. It's, you know, we're, those properties are still there and they're very diligent about that. But it's a way that we can make sure that we keep our neighborhoods and our property values up. Good. Roll. Bauman. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Graf, Laux, Aye. Manny, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Perez, Rinfleisch, Sigali, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. and Warner. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 2654 goes to the new Common Council, Public Protection and Safety. 2655 goes to the City Plan Commission. 2656 will also go to City Plan Commission. 2657, a resolution by Alderman Groff, authorizing the proper city officials to execute a lease with both doctors, LLC. Alderman Groff. And I'll move that the resolution be put upon its passage. <coughs> What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion and a second before us. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, will you call the roll? Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Groff? Aye. Laux, Aye. Manny, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Perez, Rinfleisch, Sagali, Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Warner, 
and Bauman. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. Other matters, Steve? 2658 is a uh, communication from Sheriff Quashes, Floyd County Maine Society fundraising chairperson, requesting the use of part of the city's Blue Harbor property near the fish cleaning station for use during their dog day afternoon fundraiser. That will go to Redevelopment, Redevelopment Authority. 2659 is a resolution authorizing the finance director to secure the necessary funding to build the city of Sheboygan's new police station. That will go to finance. Alderman, that's it, right? That's it. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, uh, Tic Tac from Zachary. Every time I see him, I'd give him a mince if I had him, and he gave me a gift tonight from Tic Tacs. Thanks, Zach. This is that time that no one really looks forward to, but there's a lot of pluses and minuses about it. Uh, I'm glad to be up first. I can sit down for some time. But uh, Your Honor, Council, City staff, City employees, citizens of the City of Sheboygan, um, a day like this is not easy to prepare for. I stand before you with mixed emotions, I will admit. Uh, to the people of the 7th District that have supported me through thick and thin, I say thank you very much. Your kind words and support will never be forgotten. And I heard from many of them over the last uh, week or so. To the City of Sheboygan staff and city employees, and every one of you that I have, and each and every one of you city workers that I have worked with, I say thank you. You are great people, and I sincerely appreciate all the help you have been to make my job easier by providing information to us and, and valid information. Um, and a great job that you do for the city and for the people that live in the city of Sheboygan and for the people that visit the city of Sheboygan. You are true professionals and it shows. It shows through when one looks across the city at the great accomplishments of Sheboygan. Mayor Schramm, I thank you for your support, for your help, for your guidance, <clears throat> as well as your dedication to the city of Sheboygan, which I know you are very dedicated. Uh, your door was never closed, and you always made time for the issues that I brought to you. I have a great deal of respect for the commitment and hard work you carried with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You truly were a working mayor, never for yourself, but for the city. The repairs of the long neglected infrastructure in Sheboygan, we've heard about that. Its streets, stormwater problems, the flood of 98, you were there. In the street, in the water. Public safety needs, you were there, addressing those needs. The splendid development along our riverfront, the South Pier District, and of course, Blue Harbor. The Garden Toy Factory Apartments and other developments in that area where I grew up. I spent part of my childhood right across from Kingsbury. Washington Square, Northgate, and all around our city, your stamp and seal will never fade. It has been a privilege and an honor to serve with you, often alongside you working for the best interests of the city of Sheboygan. To my fellow councilmen and women, it has been great working with each and every one of you. Even when we disagreed, we all brought different things to the table. And most often, when we were done debating, we made the best choice we possibly could. And that's what it is all about. It's not any single one of us who is always right. But between our collective minds, we made a lot of difficult and sound decisions for the city of Sheboygan and its future. It's not only big items like Blue Harbor and such. It's also many times, more importantly, the small items. Like allowing people to walk their dogs on a recreation trail along the lakefront instead of in the street. That was a community policing effort 
brought forward by the officer in that area. And it was important because it was not only a safety issue, but a quality of life issue. It's also the dozens and dozens of people with neighborhood problems, neighborhood concerns, that come to our committee meetings to get those issues looked at and get those concerns resolved. Be it wood burning furnaces outside, parking problems, building code violations, helping people cut through the red tape and finding a resolution to their problem. That's what it's all about. Those were always and will be, and always will be, some of the most rewarding parts of this job. Fortunately, I had a little extra time. <laughs> but to all the new members that will come aboard tomorrow, I would just say that when you enter this chamber, it is the city that matters. Not you, not your colleague, and not either, not either of, their, of yours or theirs future, but the future of the city of Sheboygan. You will have a burden placed upon your shoulders that you will have to carry for the duration of your service to your community. That burden is, is to make your decisions based on the best interests of the city of Sheboygan and her people, and I wish each of you well in the work that you have before you. I really need to say thank you to a very special person, and that's, of course, my wife, Diane. She couldn't be here tonight because she has one of these congestion cold things. And, uh, but for her patience and support over the past six years, thanks, Lady Di. You're up there somewhere looking at us, I think. But, and my daughter, Susan and Lisa. Lisa couldn't be here. Susan is here. Uh, my son-in-law, Rick Howard, is back, back here. My grandson, Ethan, and my granddaughter, Cassandra. Uh, I thank them for accepting the fact that their dad and their grandpa very often had to put them second. Uh, without family support, I don't think anyone could do this job. Again, Mayor Schramm, my fellow councilmen and councilwomen, the greatest city staff there is, and the people of the 7th District, I thank all of you for the privilege to serve that you have given me. I do have a little quote I'd like to read. I'm sure many of you have heard this before, but it's by Theodore Roosevelt, and uh, kind of hangs on my bathroom wall. But it says, the credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes short again and again, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, and spends himself in a worthy cause. Serving as an alderman for the city of Sheboygan is and was, for me, a worthy cause. And Sheboygan, I thank you for the privilege. Thank you, Mike. Alderman Order, you've always been a tough act to follow, so it's my privilege to, for the last time, for both of us to do so. Uh, I'll make a valiant attempt to try, and I'll probably fail. I've only been a council for two years, as such, I'll keep my comments shorter. I don't have 18 years of experience to talk about. Uh, and quite honestly, I can't uh, match what Alderman Warner has said, specifically regarding the leadership of the city when it comes to the department heads, the workers of the city. Uh, you see them outside all the time, uh, working uh, on the streets. You see them in the co police cars protecting us. You see them in the fire trucks around doing inspections and, and uh, uh, taking care of, of incidences like recently happened out towards me. And uh, I heard a lot of comments about you know, great response time and they feel safe. They know that the city is out there watching and it's a privilege to have this kind of people uh, that are behind me and in this building and all the, the city buildings uh, to have them work for us in the city of Sheboygan. Uh, everyone that works here, I'm, I'm proud of them as well. I want to thank all my constituents uh, for the last two years for all your support, their advice, uh, and late night phone calls about dogs, sidewalks, lighting, and so on. It's been an eye-opening experience about just in how many ways city government does impact everyone that lives here in the city of Sheboygan. Um, and everything that we do in this room and everything we do in the committee rooms um, is just the tip of the iceberg of all the work that's really done in the city of Sheboygan. Um, 
the reason why this is a part-time job, not a full-time job, what everyone else does is where the real work is done. Uh, we talk and flap our lips and debate, but uh, the real work is done by some remarkable people. I do want to thank them, the department heads, all the city workers. Um, truly, they make the city the best city to live in. I'm, I'm proud to be here. Uh, it's been an honor to represent my constituents, to serve my constituents, and to work with all these people uh, in the city of Sheboygan. Uh, looking towards the future, I do have some advice, though, uh, to, to the people. Um, I don't think it surprised anybody in this room uh, as well. Uh, and, it, and it's not just advice for the incoming older per pe persons. It's not advice for the incoming mayor. Uh, it's not advice for those of us that are leaving this council for the last time uh, as elected officials. It's advice for everybody, uh, department heads, uh, workers, everybody in the city of Sheboygan. Um, I am proud to be an American about, in the system that we have here in terms of elections. We get the best of the best to come in here. Uh, it's a calling to, to put up with everything. But the problem that we have is sometimes elections make things divisive, black and white. Uh, the one person's a winner and one person's a loser. And that, that's unfortunate sometimes because you have a lot of quality people wanting to serve, a lot of quality people with great ideas. Unfortunately, only one makes it in. Um, but the election is over, and those that do remain within the city government, I think, have an obligation uh, to serve the city. The election's over, but the city's still here. The city's still going to run, and we all have to work together to make sure it still does. And that's everybody, from elected officials to all the workers. I've seen changes since I've been here in the last two years. I have seen things be more divisive. Every issue becomes yes, no. You're for it, you're against it. You're for them, you're against us. And I think that's unfortunate because a lot of the great decisions are made in the gray areas, in the middle. Uh, and I think we need to look at that. We need to take time and, and find the true answer, the best answer. And it's not necessarily black and white. It's in the middle. It's going to do the best job for the city of Sheboygan. So I urge everyone to find that, that, that not to be on different sides, but to rather find the common ground and go that way. Um, the other change I've seen in the city of Sheboygan is by far, I think now than we ever had in the past, we have more citizen activity. I think that the, uh, certainly with issues that Alderman Warner talked about in public works, about the outside uh, smoke, the smoke that's bothering neighbors with the outdoor fire, uh, and a lot of other issues that I think situations are calling up far more frequently than they ever have in the past. But the uh, neighbors against drugs. I mean, whoever thought that three years ago we'd be as successful with citizen activity? If the citizens who, with their neighbors, may not get along, can work together, we should be able to in this council as well. Uh, and that's the advice I have, is just uh, forget about sides and look at what's best for the city and go with that. So again, thank you for, for uh, uh, all your support, and it's been a pleasure serving the city of Sheboygan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Alderman Van Acker. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to thank all the people of the second district for their support for the last 18 years. It has been honored to have served them. I would I also want to thank all the city department heads and city employees for their hard work. I have made many friends on the council floor over the years, and I appreciate the work all of you have done. I would like to thank you, Mayor Schramm, for the hard work you have done for the city. I have truly enjoyed my years as alderman. I'd like to thank my wife, who was here last night, tonight, and my family for my help and my work. I also would like to thank the two ladies behind me, Marge and Bonnie, for the flower on my desk. Thank you all. Thanks, guys. Now it's no secret anymore. Nita knows where you got it from. <laughs> <laughs> she knew already. Gary. Thank you, Your Honor. Being the uh, newest member of the council and one of the uh, shortest lived members of the council, I might add. Um, it's been a real pleasure, uh, a real experience, uh, a growth experience for me personally, a wonderful lesson in civics. Um, I would like to thank personally Mayor Schramm for his dedication and leadership, uh, but more importantly for his friendship. Uh, it's something that I, I've I've grown to appreciate immensely, and you will always have my respect, respect and gratitude. To Mayor-elect Perez, let me offer my congratulations. Now we look forward to your, your 
change of direction, your new leadership, but we know for sure that it's going to go in the same direction as all the past mayors to the betterment of the city. To all the members of the old council, I'd, I'd like to just thank you for making me feel welcome and a part of the group. To the incoming alder persons, I wish you all the best. There are several huge choices that you'll be making in the coming months. I wish you God's wisdom in making those choices. Thank you all very much. And thank you, Alderman. As I sit before you this evening, concluding my tenure as mayor, I would like to extend a thank you for the privilege, honor, and opportunity to have held elected office for 18 years in the city of Sheboygan. Our world, our city, and myself personally all have experienced tremendous changes since I first took office on this council in 1987. During this time, we have witnessed the reopening and rebirth of North A Street, the development of our riverfront, the construction of our marina, the extension of Taylor Drive and its retail development, the reconstruction of Cal Calumet Drive, Kohler Memorial Drive, Indiana Avenue, and South Business Drive. Abandoned brownfield sites now are home to Washington Square, Northgate Shopping Center, and the South Pier District, which was highlighted by the construction of the Blue Harbor Resort and Conference Center. As a common council, we passed a 3% borrowing cap and maintained a respectable municipal bond rating. Since 1987, there have been a lot of meetings, decisions, and votes taken. There have been late night phone calls, vacations cut short, speeches written, and rewritten, and rewritten. There were agreements and disagreements, contract negotiations, meetings with developers and investors, neighborhood visits, and opinions shared. There are so many people, from fellow alder persons to city department heads, to those who have stepped forward and served on committees and commissions, to those who invested their time and talents into Sheboygan's present and future, that I could not possibly thank everyone individually. Our accomplishments, while many belong to all of us, they represent our hard work over the past 18 years. The past eight years as mayor have been some of the most challenging and rewarding years of my life. I wouldn't trade them for anything, and I have no regrets. I wouldn't have done anything differently if I could, because I've always stood up for the things I believe in, the values my parents raised me with, and those I pass along to my children. Win or lose elections, the things we believe in are with us for a lifetime. The past eight years have provided a lifetime's worth of accomplishments and memories. While the past eight years have left a visible mark on the progress upon our community, the most rewarding events of the past eight years are those not caught on camera, in pictures, or left for future generations. I will always cherish the handshakes and hugs at our city parades, the evenings spent at Fountain Park during the Twilight Concert Series, and the well wishes received while enjoying the sights and sounds of Sheboygan. We have left Sheboygan a better place for those who will follow. To my family, my friends, and all who have worked with me over the past 18 years, I say thank you. It was a job well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Okay, we've been here long enough, so we should move on. Uh, Alderman Bauman, please. 
Uh, you moved to adjourn, right? Uh, no. No, okay. <laughs> I'm going to leave that up to one of the outgoing older persons tonight. Okay. You know, I, I try to jump in there right away each time, but not right now. Okay. I also have a few words to uh, say this evening, as I usually do at the end of every council year. I just seem to like to do this or take the abuse, whichever, I don't know which. But uh, this being the last meeting of the 2004-05 Common Council, in the eight-year, two-term service of our Mayor, Jim Schramm. I'd like to take a little time before we adjourn to say a few words about the following persons who will be leaving us this evening as their terms have ended. I'll try to keep my, I think it's 10 pages here. Anyway, I'll keep it to a minimum. <laughs> I'm joking. Let me begin with Gary Laux. This council elected Gary to fill the remaining term of office that Alderman Bill Wangaman had left. Gary served for many years on the Sheboygan Transit Commission, did you not? You knew all the inner workings of the transit and of course its buses and everything else that goes with it. You served well in your capacity as older person, even though it was a short time, but you made many sound decisions during this time that you were on the council. Gary, I wish you a lot of luck and I hope to see you here again as a council representative. Alderman Rinflesh. I first met Eric a couple of years ago just after he was elected to council. He fit in immediately. His personality is outstanding. I'm not joking, that's for real. He served on several committees and I had the honor of working with you on public works for your two years that you were here. You too gave lively discussion and brought up many points and ideas, not only in committee meetings, but for discussion during the council meetings that were of great interest and value. Eric, you've showed devotion to your position and you were also well liked by your constituency. That I've heard and also from reading in newspaper articles and uh, letters to the editor that they really wanted to keep you here. Eric, I will personally miss you as part of this governing body and thank you for your years of service. Alderman Van Akron. Don, you were an alderman for a very long time. You sat in that chair even long before I was elected. By now, you probably own it. <laughs> All kidding aside, you served this council for 18 good years. You went through three mayors. You've seen 8th Street go from concrete to bricks and back to concrete. You saw Hill's department store become the area where Mead Public Library is now located. You probably even said, let's go down by Prangies one time and so, and look at the window displays. I know I did. There was so much change for the good as your time as alderman, I'll bet it's hard to remember all the changes in this community. Don, your work for this city was and is historical. The shoes you leave behind will be hard to fill. I'll miss the leadership that you have offered to this council. Lastly, for Alderman Warner, when you're first elected by the seventh district to the council, I thought that a new face would be interesting. I was right in that thinking. You quickly showed this city that you were able to do your homework and help make the best decisions for the city that you could. Yes, you disagreed at times, but you were not afraid to ask questions to help your decision making you always were ready to answer those questions from your peers and come up with the right answers. I have deep respect for you. You became a good leader in this community and all things must come to an end. I respect you always, Mike. Something tells me we haven't seen the last of you in the public eye. I think you'll be back. I wish you the best of everything. Once again, to the aldermen who are leaving this council this evening, it was a pleasure to work with all of you. Mayor, I have one for you, too. Uh oh There's a part in here you may not like, but that's the way it goes. I'm a straight shooter. Mayor Schramm, many have addressed you this way. Many have addressed you as a mayor or simply Jim. I even know a few who have addressed you under your breath, too, but let's not go there. I got to know you during your first run at public office as older person. You and I both were on that same ballot for election, if you recall. That's right. We campaigned hard, and you ultimately beat me that year. The following year, I ran for the seat vacated by Alderman Halmeister. 
and was chosen by electric electorate to serve my city. You and I sat next to each other, you in this seat, I over there, for several years until you got that big bug to run for mayor. We, although representing the same district and the same voting public, had disagreements that we openly argued our points that before then, Mayor Schneider. During your first run at mayor, I'm sure you, you will remember this. I did not support you as a candidate. The public chose you to lead this great city of Sheboygan. One of your greatest challenges was that 100-year storm in 1998. I will not forget how you went out and pitched in to help those in need during their time of crisis and did all you could for those people. I gained more respect for you and shortly after you were elected mayor, after you were elected mayor eight years ago and now, I am sorry I did not believe in your leadership abilities in the beginning. You were blamed for bad decisions, tax rates, and more. Rarely ever for good decisions. Your job was not an easy one. You were our city CEO. The legislative body makes the decisions. You were able to break a tie vote, but you never, ever vetoed any decision made by the councils that you signed those documents for. You supported the decisions of previous councils and this current council. You made history in this city. Your door was open to everyone. Jim, you leave this position with great respect from this council, and I'll always have respect for you. I could continue with more, but some of us do have to get up early tomorrow morning <laughs> to get to work. So uh, again, thank you, Jim, for a job. Well done. Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> thank you. Who's going to make the motion? Gary? Alderman Lokes? Making the motion? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. We have motion second before us under discussion. <laughs> Hearing none? Dispatchals adjourned. Thank <laughs> you.